it's real. It's real. The countdown happened. It's happening. This is it. Ready as ever. <laughs> it feels so. I feel like a little girl. I know. <laughs> Today is Wednesday, September 22nd, 2020. That's when we're recording this. We're recording it Wednesday, even though it comes out on a Thursday. We're just uh, we're just letting you know what what time it is because everything's going to be changing day by day this week. This is the producer's happy hour with two non-union represented producers on opposite coasts <laughs> chatting over drinks about what it means to be a good producer. I'm Lawrence Lewis in Los Angeles. And it is 2021. And I'm God Sister Christian in New York it. City. <laughs> it's okay, Lawrence. You know what? It, I'm drunk and it's really early. I do it. <laughs> and we're back after a couple of busy weeks. And today we're talking about IOTC's pending nationwide strike authorization vote. Yes. M- a bunch of drama. <laughs> Uh, and we want to hear from you. We want to hear your thoughts on this strike. So please join the conversation at producershappyhourgroup.com or email us at producershappyhour at gmail.com. Send us your questions, your comments, your gripes, your thoughts about the strike anonymously, of course, anything you want. Rate and review us on Apple Podcasts because it really helps other people like you find the show. And if you have questions for us, we want you to join us for office hours. We believe in mentorship and sharing information in this business. So if you're new to the industry or you're stuck somewhere in your career and need some advice, hit us up. We're always busy, but we will get to you. Uh, same email, producershappyhour at gmail.com. And just let us know you'd like to have office hours with us. What are you drinking for happy hour today? Well, I have a, so I happen to be in LA and I have a very, very early, ridiculously early pre-pro meeting. So I've decided to start off the day with an Irish coffee. There you go. Smart move. <laughs> yes. Still looking professional. And Lawrence is still drunk from the night before. And I'm still drunk from the night before. No, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm not. Um, and uh, yeah, this morning I'm just having some lovely green tea. No. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Boo. I know. So boring. I know, but I will be, it will be a fun time at my pre-pro meeting. I'll tell you that that much, folks. Well, we've had a couple of weeks off. Mm -hmm. I know. um, You've been uh, out of country. I've been out of country. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I also know you had a GP's memorial. um, And I don't think Mm -hmm. we've spoken much about him since then. Um, But I wanted to check in with you. How are you doing? What's going on? I, uh, well, it was a lovely service and I got to see people and talk about um, Greg and uh, that part that was amazing. And then I came back out to LA cause I had several jobs that, you know, needed attending to. Mm-hmm. So I'm back out here now. Um, it's been a, it's been a busy couple of weeks um, to say the least. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, every post that I've seen anywhere has said, you know, I can't find, I mean, like people are just scrambling to find any kind of help in oh, any yeah. position. Oh, yeah. Oh, 100%. Because I know. But I mean, the the amount of jobs that are budgeted for, you know, 14 plus hour days are more than I've ever seen in my life. Mm. And that's just, <laughs> that's just it's not cool. Yeah. <laughs> to say it, the very least. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And yeah. how have you been? I've been excruciatingly busy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> lots of overlapping jobs, lots of uh, just lots. Do my best to protect myself and uh, help my uh, mental state and get through these jobs easily and without too much, you know, personal uh, tra- <laughs> trauma. Um, and so it just it's just been a balancing act. You know, it's like getting back on the, the bike again. You know, we've spoken a lot about our mental health and I know I've been struggling. I know you've been struggling um, mm-hmm. getting back to work at this pace. So I've been through a big summer of a lot of jobs, a lot of overlapping jobs and uh, I've come out the other side <laughs> and I'm feeling I'm feeling pretty OK, um, a little physically okay. exhausted, but but yeah. I feel like I've kind of maintained mm-hmm. Uh, some sense of uh, stability in my head and made these jobs all kind of happen quite successfully. So that's amazing. And I, I think back at, um, I mean, please, everyone, I know you've heard it a thousand times for me, but I think back at the level of what we were working at before, mm. even attempting to get back to that level um, and doing it with, you know, any kind of grace or, you know, non attitude or, you know, trying to make the sets of, of a safe and fun place for people is just nobody that I've spoken to is happy 
everybody that I've spoken to is overworked yeah. and they feel burdened and um, the expectation on them is heavy. Mm -hmm. um, and this is for, I am not sure what the reason is. It's for content and entertainment. Yeah. So the time I know, and I don't want to minimize our jobs. And I also understand the argument of we're compensated mm -hmm. for our, you know, because our day rates are higher than, you know, when somebody hears, oh, PAs make 250 a day. Wow. I make, you know, 500 in a week. Yeah. Right. But you actually can run errands. You can do your grocery shopping. You can do, <laughs> <laughs> you're not expected to drive people when you can barely keep your eyes open. Like um, right. there's a difference between um, what 250 entitles people to think that you can do. Mm -hmm. And that to me is where we're at. It's what the expectations are of what people think they get if they're paying you $250. Mm-hmm. And that to me is just has changed. I mean, for the worse, obviously. I mean, like before it was, you know, shitty. <laughs> Don't yeah. get me wrong. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. now it's almost like an owning. Yeah. Has happened and nobody oh, owns it. Absolutely. Anybody. Absolutely. <laughs> and especially not for that little amount of money. <laughs> no. So no. the tides have shifted in a way that is definitely what seems to be what who seems to have the power are the client mm -hmm. has the power. Mm hmm. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, we talk often about how we dreamed of coming back to work after the pandemic. And, oh, my God. And, that was uh, such a lovely time. It was such a lovely time. We were so naive <laughs> to think that things could actually change and shift and be better. And they not necessarily, we were not so necessarily are. I know. I know. And I've seen, you know, we talk about IA stories, the Instagram channel a lot. Oh but my it's, God, it's all that fills my feed. By the it's way. all that fills like my feed right now. I can, I'm in the feed and I'm just like, holy shit, there's like 10 posts. I mean, I wonder, I would love to know statistically. I mean, we should try to get them on the show. I know. I was, I actually was going to talk to you about that. I'm going to reach out to them and see if we can get them on the show. Um, yeah. Because I'd love to hear more about I know they're up to 70,000 followers now. When we first started talking about them, they only had, you know, 20. So they definitely have grown and uh, it's definitely. Oh, yeah. That's because of us, too. It's <laughs> it's us. Totally. It's totally us. So they should totally come. <laughs> <laughs> and, but all of it obviously is a, a, a great window into seeing what is happening and the thinking behind the IATSE negotiations with the AMPTP and the pending strike authorization vote. That means it's show topic time, <laughs> which is this strike vote, Dang. strike authorization vote. <laughs> I mean, can I just say that I'm excited about the, the drama? I mean, I do like a bit of drama and I do like people when they stand up for themselves. And I do think that this is um, long overdue. 100%. I mean, it was, it was coming to a head. It, it needed to. Like, here we are. Yeah, it, it did. And uh, I started in TV and film before I moved to commercials. And I got out of that because I couldn't take it. I couldn't do six months of six day weeks of 14, 16 hour days. I couldn't do it anymore. And I didn't know how somebody was supposed to do it. And this is still back, you know, when I was single and had all the energy in the world. I was just like, mm, I'm not into this. And uh, cool. so I got into commercials because they were sh at the very least shorter, right? Yeah. They, I mean, like, yeah, you can, you can make more money for three weeks and then take a week, like the, the draw of this freelance, you know, commercial short form lifestyle is you can take off yeah. and you can pick it back up and you make a little bit more than, and yeah, but we all know that that's a, <laughs> it's like, it's like new parents saying, no, it's great. You should have kids. And then when you have kids, you're like, oh, oh. <laughs> nobody told me all the bad things. And that's what I think commercial work is. Once yeah. you're in, you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, there's also problems here, too. I get it. But yeah, so follow AI stories on Instagram. If you haven't already, you'll see a lot of personal stories about how the industry has has impacted people's personal lives, their own health and safety, their own relationships. Mm -hmm. It's devastating. And you can see a lot of it. You know, there's there's some things about somebody posted about they were they're a writer's assistant. And some things that they had to do for 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 the for the writers' room, and I started as a writers' assistant on a TV show, so I could totally relate to that. My friend was their personal assistant. They were taught some some people have posted about personal assistant work and how demeaning some of that stuff can be, and how poorly you're treated depending on who you're the personal assistant of. So there's a lot of things in there you can connect to, and then of course the long hours. 
the ridiculously long hours for major, major corporations, major streaming corporations, major brands for commercials. We know that the money is there and they show that the money is there as soon as COVID happened and there was something preventing them from making their content or commercials and it costs an extra hundred grand or something to to keep the set safe and make their spots. The money showed up. It was there. It was 100 percent there, even though we had to fight for every penny of it, because, mm-hmm. you know, I think that our estimates last um, June or July, if I remember correctly, were like anywhere from 20 to 30 percent more. Yep. Just start adding that to your budget. And that's and it's maintained that level. It's maintained that level. I feel like now they're the, it's being carved out of the production budget. <laughs> so you'll get a budget and it's really tight and it's like, ooh, oh, right, because with oh, yeah. the with the COVID costs, that would have been the right budget. But all that aside, it's all over the news, or at least the trades. Hollywood Reporter wrote an article about IATSE calling for a strike. It says they may call. We know that they are going to call for a, a strike authorization vote. And it's a big deal. The contract ended uh, some time ago, and they we've been kind of provisionally extending it. And they've stopped. And apparently IATSE delivered a big uh, package proposal or... package mm-hmm. to, to mm-hmm. the AMPTP, and they came back and mm-hmm. said, We're not even going to look at it. And so I that's know, when... that was like, so that was like a nice little, <laughs> like, so I dare traumatic. you. Oh, shit. I know when they said that, I was like, mm. <laughs> So, um, yeah, they're basically daring the members to do it because they don't think that the members have support. Which it's quite frightening because I feel like there's so much at stake, and that if they don't do it, that shows a huge, that's a huge transfer of power. I mean, if it's they a don't massive, do it, then, oh yeah, then we're going to be under this like new media contract for, mm-hmm. that's just, it's it's going to be like old media contract. <laughs> yeah. Because um, the streaming services, those scale rates are ridiculous. And I, I, you know, honestly, since I do short form and commercials and content, I I just recently understood what the um what the new media contract is for TV shows and movies and uh, holy yeah. shit balls yeah that it's, is um shit it's I think a DP um I think DP uh scale is four hundred and eighty for eight mm-hmm. now here's the thing so I have this is my con- my wonder out there um in solidarity. Because um, I know that this contract that they're negotiating doesn't affect the commercial contract. I wonder if in solidarity, the commercial IATSE will strike. Mm-hmm. That's, because that's, that might get some shit done. I know. I've had, uh, I've had a couple people have emailed in to ask about it. And somebody posted a comment asking about the same thing. It is still IATSE. And, you know, a, a lot of times in these strikes, other people will stand up and join in support. So... If it's IATSE, I know it's against the AMPTP contract, mm-hmm. but what's what's to stop them from asking all of IATSE to join? It's going to be, that's going to be, I think that's hard to I do. Mean, people, people love to work. People want to work. People need to work. We went through a whole bout of not working oh, that really screwed people that. up. So there might be people out there that just want to But I can't work. imagine that this would last very long. No. I hear you, but I don't, yeah. like, I... I mean, if the whole fucking shit shuts down, I can't imagine how long this would last. I mean, maybe a few weeks. And I'm not saying, listen, we've also discussed last year about how we didn't even understand the scope of how many people live job to job or paycheck to paycheck. Oh, yeah. No idea. And then we realized, holy shit, it is a lot. So I'm not saying this isn't going to hurt. But, you know. Those stories are familiar. I remember going through all that stuff. And then I remember not wanting to be that producer that asked Mm -hmm, for those things. mm -hmm. So I'm not, I, I'm not that type of producer that said, I think that good produce, like good producers who actually look after their crew Mm -hmm. are unfortunately few and far between Mm -hmm. is from what I'm understanding. And that is just like, I, I, I don't understand how humanity goes right out the door when people become in charge. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I saw something interesting last night on the IA thread, and it was about what they call French hours. Oh, yes. <laughs> and you had mentioned today when we were talking pre-show that uh, IATSE is trying to put it into the contract. Mm-hmm. And the one of the, and I'm just, I remember just the discussion of French hours when I was, like, you know, years and years and years ago, and how some, you know, especially on product shoots or 
you know, I, print is completely different, but like product yeah. shoots or food shoots where you would have tables of food and like catering would always happen at the lunch hour. But since the crews were so small, they wanted to work nine straight, but they would also give each other breaks. Like there would be right. two ACs on and they would switch out. Mm-hmm. They would, they would, yeah. Like catering's the just there and small. open. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All day long. Yep. And crews are smaller now. So the, the ability to cover somebody on set isn't there. And what the two big points that I saw that were interesting to me is one is somebody who clearly wasn't from this country or from the industry said, how is it possible that the employer can choose? Why is it even an option for them to take your meal break away? Yeah. And I was yeah. like, yeah. I mean, the, the shit that we get used to in this industry mm-hmm. is insane. Like who Absolutely. would ever, you would never go to like the mall <laughs> JC Penney right. and tell somebody that they couldn't have a meal break for the day. That's like a labor law. So that's <laughs> so I know. <laughs> and we've just packaged it up in something sounding so international, French hours. Let's Ooh, just do, hours. Let's do it like the French do. And, and it actually is right. not, it's not related to the way they operate. I don't know how the term came no. up. I heard yeah, something I mean, about this European recently. European hours or something. Yeah. yeah like, oh, I, when you I, go to Prague, they do this. Hmm. And it's like, all right. But they also have like, you know, five deep in every, you know. In every department. They can actually do that. Exactly. Right. And so, <laughs> and then the other thing is, is that quote unquote, nine hours is shooting time. So it's who's on set. So let's say a script supervisor and director and mm-hmm. maybe camera, they're all in at 7 a.m. And then they're done by four because that's their nine hours and whatever but art department may have had a two-hour pre-call production may have been there four hours glam squad may have been there Mm -hmm. getting the talent ready like all of those things and then they will never get a break not one exactly 14 hours worth of work so I, i just think that um as sexy as it may sound to get home early but that is just for five or six people yeah oh yeah and what's wrong with taking a lunch break like, really, do you, I mean, like, just add some days to the schedule. I mm-hmm. mean, I bet it's cheaper than to pay all those meal penalties. We've done the math. Yeah. We've done the job. I mean, like, it, it can get in, the meal penalties can get insane. So, yeah. I had no idea that they were trying to put that into the actual contract because French hours are just, they're cruel. It's cruel. It's cruel. I want to read a little bit from the, from the Hollywood Reporter article, but I just wanted to read this because it seems like there's something interesting here. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. IATSE, which represents crew members, including grips, cinematographers, editors, costumers, hairstylists, and more, informed members September 20th, which was Monday, that it would Mm -hmm. hold a nationwide strike authorization vote. No date has been disclosed amid increasingly strained contract negotiations with producers. 13 West Coast locals have been negotiating their next three-year film and television contract. I know there's been some confusion about that. It's both film and television Mm -hmm with the Alliance of Motion Picture Television Producers, AMPTP, in stops and starts for months. Mm, and the, after, AICP of, the, the AICP of, of, of AICP movie and of television. Movie and, television. Um, and they've been doing it for months. Uh, <laughs> after producers declined to respond to the last proposal, union <clears throat> leaders led by IATSE President Matthew Loeb promised to push for change that is long overdue in this industry. The AMPTP countered that it has presented a comprehensive proposal that the union walked away from. IATSE is also currently negotiating its theatrical and television motion picture area standards agreement covering areas outside LA and New York. Around 60,000 members are covered under both agreements. So that's some mm, that's in-depth knowledge thanks to the Hollywood Reporter. Yeah. Right. And so I also saw something very interesting that uh, a lot of the studios are, you know, they're also new owned by like, not only as studios, um, they also have large news conglomerates uh-huh. with them, like yep. Time Warner, CNN, all that. And mm-hmm. so that the coverage of this has been non-existent. Oh, really? Yeah. And it's because... Interesting. It's, I know. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> so I just think, yeah, the only thing that we'll get, this is a grassroots thing. It, it, it you know, is. I mean, like, so it's, a, it's wrangling 60,000 people. It's getting, you know, 45,000 people to vote the same way. Yeah. In a very diverse industry, yeah, and um, that has members not only in LA, mm-hmm. and there are also um, members I that aren't they, actively working that right. might have an opinion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that what I'm seeing, um, uh, the voices that are coming in, um, that I see who use social media, 
I would say that they've been in the business about 15 years uh, or less on average is just from, you know, reading and understanding what, when I, when I read them and I hear some of the stories that you can kind of place when you've been around, uh-huh, uh-huh. Have, you can kind of place a timeline uh-huh. and it just, it feels like, um, the, what we're hearing from is a ton of people who are uh, who have been doing it for a while, yeah. but not the people who have been doing it for 30 years, you know. Right. Which right. also have voting rights. Yeah, exactly. And they have that mentality that I hate. The one that, oh, I paid my dues. Well, I know. Yeah, you paid your uh-huh. dues so it can be better for me. You didn't pay your fucking dues so it could be worse for me. Yeah, exactly. Refer back to our last episode when <laughs> <laughs> we had a similar conversation <laughs> with somebody online about this exact same thing. It's, it's um, yeah, what, what's, what's wrong with change? What's wrong with tr- treating people better, even though that's what we went through? Why can't mm-hmm. we stand up for the next generation and ask for something better, demand something better, right? And that's what we're seeing happening. And I really hope, I mean, I'm in full support of a strike for not for yes. more reasons than just the, the baby mama drama that I love. It's, it's more, it's just, it's because better conditions for crew equal better conditions for production. And we understand that a lot of this has been like, even in the article, it says with producers. Mm -hmm. negotiating with producers. Mm -hmm. So producers means a thousand different things, um, but for production, like we are, and we happen to be called producers, but for us, our days are much longer than any crew member on set. Yeah. They just are. Yeah. And so shorter and more succinct rules of Mm -hmm. how a better treatment means all of that for us, even though we're absolutely not represented at all. Yes, exactly. We deserve better and our crews deserve better. So we uh, definitely are in favor mm-hmm. of this strike. I know. Like, so <laughs> let me know. We'll come down and we'll, we'll give coffee on the line. Yeah, exactly. We exactly. Oops. Whatever we need to do. I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready. I'll make cookies. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll be there. I got we'll, make glitter. Pro- we'll make producer happy hour cookies. <laughs> exactly. <I'm> like <laughs> glitter. Um, one razzle more th- dazzle. One more thing before we go. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. Last night I watched this documentary. I know it's been around for years, and I I've know the story. Uh, I remember the story of 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 the the main subject of this documentary. It's by Haskell Wexler, award winning right. cinematographer mm-hmm. who directed this documentary back. Did you ever work th- with him? By no, the way? I never did. No, I did. Did yeah. you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Amazing. A couple of jobs, I think, uh, you know, so long ago that yeah. how could I remember? It's of, like working. Of course. With, yeah. yeah. It's like working with Harris. Uh-huh. <laughs> he was like, oh, okay, like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but it was probably like a Garnet commercial or something. Right. Then, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, anyway. It's please. not on his reel. Let's just say that. <laughs> um, 2000. <laughs> two, I know. He made this documentary in 2006 <laughs> called Who and Needs Gersh. Who Needs Sleep. <laughs> Right. And it explores the health and safety ramifications of sleep deprivation among mm. film crew who work long hours in the movie industry. There was this one gentleman uh, named Brent Hirschman, who was an assistant cameraman who fell asleep behind the wheel after a very long day. And uh, he crashed his car and he died. And I remember this. And this was a very big moment uh, in my very early years of, of being in film where, you know, this was Brent's rule, Brent's law that they were trying to pass where it would cap hours on set. And I thought it was capped at 16, but I think in the documentary, there, it was actually 14 that they were trying to get capped. And that, mm-hmm. that was some rule that, that I don't know. I don't know. Um, Local 52 has that rule in New York. Is that still called Brent's rule? It's, it's 16. No, it, no, it, it's not at all. They have a yeah. 16. They have a like, you must ask permission to go past 16 hours. Right. Like every union yeah. member. This documentary is available on Vimeo. If anybody has any interest in, in kind of seeing what this fight is about, I highly recommend uh, checking it out. It's uh, definitely worth the watch. So we have an interesting couple of weeks ahead to see what happens with this vote. I do. And I also have one more point to make. You know, I know that we said it earlier, but apparently this does not affect the commercial contract. But I did just want to like reiterate that because it doesn't affect the contract, does it mean that those union members should won't be striking too? And solidarity. And solidarity with yeah. the, the fellow members of their locals. I could see support. I could see industry-wide strike happening. So I'm excited. Like, I'll make some signs. 
We'll yeah. bake cookies. I, I, we got some thermoses full of soup. Whatever you guys need, just reach out. Full we'll, support. We're here to support. Full support over here at Producers <laughs> Happy Hour. If anybody wants to come on and anonymously talk about their feelings on the strike, Ooh. share your your grief, share your grievances. Uh, maybe you're not into it. Share your like your concerns. Or share your concerns. Your, um, even yeah, you're like you're scared. Like, are you scared? Are you excited? Like, what is it? We want to hear we from you. Know. There's a lot going on, mm-hmm. and uh, we're here to talk about it. Producers Happy Hour was created with the help of Christopher Daniels, who is a treatment designer, and he created our logo and branding. And Kyle Puccia is a music composer for commercials, film, and TV, and he created our show music. This episode was edited by Eric Beals. Thanks for listening. We're back next week, we think. (laughs) Hopefully. Send us your voice recordings or your emails to producershappyhour at gmail.com. Lauren, if somebody just has to get you, how can they? Two ways. Voiceoflawrence.com for my voice. LawrenceTLewis.com for producing. Christian, what about you and your amazing producing skills? They can get me at SisterChristianProduces.com. All right, everybody. See you. Bye.